my oldest daughter can hold my youngest baby right now. Do with that much milk. Technically, yeah, I am co-sleeping. So I just finished feeding her and that's how much extra. But it's also just sad because she'll never ever ever be that small ever again. It's so crazy, that's pretty much the four week postpartum update. talked much about like pumping and um or really like showed much of it because i'm gonna be honest every single baby i've ever had i end up with an oversupply and i know this could be like a really sensitive topic because some people i know um it's a struggle to nurse and pump and have a milk supply and everything but and to just say i'm not doing anything extra special i'm not doing like drinking any like teas i'm not eating lactation cookies i'm not doing anything this is just supply on demand and simply 100 percent milk production in my mind comes from a few different factors one genetics some people are born with less milk ducts than other two supply and demand so the more you stimulate and take out milk the more milk you will make um, number three hormonal which kind of pairs with supply and demand. I think I've always had higher levels of prolactin because even when I try to wean, it takes me months, like months and months and months. Like it does not go away. Like I always have such a high supply with every single baby. That being said, I decided this time, I only froze milk for the first two weeks. With Sebastian, I'm just being honest, I, I didn't use it. Like I didn't use any frozen milk bags until like we moved out here and i decided to wean and he probably was only using it for like two three weeks and the rest of it i just got rid of and the move had a lot to do with it too i tried my best to donate it or to find someone you know whatever i only donated a little to my sister-in-law and literally the rest of it i had to dump and throw out because we were moving so and I just, you know, I never used it. I always just pumped and made everything, you know, fresh for him. Because that's just how it worked out. I'm going to be honest, like, all, all this here, like, you know, because I pumped, like, before bed, in the middle of the night, and then when I woke up, and plus, like, nurse her, too, all throughout those durations, and she's not drinking it. I'm not getting up out of bed and putting that in the fridge because I'm not saving it like I don't care I'm pumping in the middle of the night with just dirty parts just because again supply and demand I don't plan on having a freezer stash this time but I am not putting out the money for bags because again last time I ended up having to dump and throw out like thousands of ounces of Sebastian's milk that I just never use and that's like hundreds of dollars worth of milk bags and not to mention now that we moved here we raise our own meat and everything so i just you know don't have the freezer space anymore like technically i do but we're using it for our meat that we're eating and i just again i plan on either hopefully we're still exclusively nursing or going exclusively pumping i don't know i'm just taking it day by day but so far it's been a month of exclusively nursing she's not using any of this milk i am just not putting out the money for bags anymore and i'm not buying another freezer and we live like over an hour away from like the population it's really hard for me to find anywhere to donate and i'm just not doing the effort i have a lot of anxiety about going out in public this time unfortunately a lot of it is just going down the drain the other morning like all this milk went towards the bath but there's only so much you can do with that much milk i just didn't want to tell anyone this because i know a lot of people get like angry what people decide to do with their milk which is just really strange and weird to me like what do you care but i can kind of get like you know the feelings like if you're struggling with the milk supply and you see someone just dumping it out like i could feel like maybe like some sort of like i don't want to say jealousy but kind of like that but i don't know that's just kind of why i haven't mentioned it i don't know we'll see what the future holds because my sister-in-law is actually pregnant with twins so that might be a possibility like maybe my excess milk will go to her but for now I'm just being honest, like, we don't really need it. I don't know. 
I'm sorry. Like, but um, I actually am dumping all, like this wouldn't be, it's not, it's been in like room temperature for like hours beyond belief. And again, I don't plan on giving Adeline a bath today because I noticed with my other kids, when I would give them a bath every single day or like pretty much every day, it would just make their skin break out more, more dried skin and just, I don't know, cradle cap really bad. And Adeline has only gotten a handful of baths this time, not on purpose. I just, you know, life's been busy with just her, you know, cause she's been, she's had like a lot of issues and stuff. I do use it for her baths, but today I'm just not. And one thing I did notice also, which isn't really helping my oversupply, but again, like it's just, I think it's just who I am, you know, genetic wise. I think I just will always be someone that produces a lot of milk. But I noticed cause she hit one month a couple days ago and she was having really, really bad reflux issues. I decided to see what it would be like to, you know, cause I pump this side and she only nurses off this side. I decided to pump, you know, when I start pumping like two minutes of getting rid of a lot of the four milk and like a heavy letdown, a lot of it has gone away. It's either it's because she's just getting bigger or that was it. But so far, like knock on wood, things have been getting a little bit better with the reflux. She hasn't been in this whatsoever. I'm gonna return it at the end of the month because that's when I can. I really, you know, take safe sleep in consideration as something that's like really, really important. But this journey has been so different with her. She's a completely different baby. Still co-sleeping. Technically, yeah, it's co-sleeping, but we, um, it's like a knockoff Dakotot thing. And she's just been sleeping in the middle of us like that in a swaddle. She's, uh, the swaddle's in the, I think it's out there. She's in like a halo, um, like a fle the fleece halo swaddle and then she goes in that and she's been completely fine we get really good stretches throughout the night and it's just i don't know how she notices the difference because like okay technically like she's laying flat now and sleeping really good like does she like smell us smell me i don't know but one thing i have to say about like co-sleeping technically yeah i am co-sleeping when she starts fussing or like i need a feeder it's just like i turn over real quick and it just feels so much easier than having to like get up and bend over in a bassinet or like whatever so far knock on wood we're getting more sleep that way and i have had a lot of people a lot of people because i've opened up about it on my instagram that we're co-sleeping a lot of people co-sleep and i think it's an extremely hidden factor because a lot of people get hate for it i don't like it it's not my favorite thing it's just that's what's working right now and i'm just taking it day by day i have fears that she'll end up in our bed till she's like one, but I'm just taking it day by day because, you know, she is a lot more clingy and sensitive than my other two were. So that's just what we're, it's just what it is right now. I'm still taking a prenatal every single day. And then Gino actually got these, they're like, actually like organs um, to help regulate your hormones. Um, my hormones were the baby blues hormones and the hormonal drop was extremely intense for me, like really, really hard to deal with. It really messed with like my thought process with a lot of things, but I've been noticing now that I'm four weeks postpartum, I'm still a little up and down. I still get like sad over things like her growing up, even though like I am having a hard time with the newborn phase. It's like bittersweet that she's getting bigger because that means she's gonna be easier and life will go back to just feeling more normal. But it's also just sad because she'll never ever ever be that small ever again. It's something I've just been struggling with because you know, each day that goes by, I just like think this weird thing in my head, like it's just further away from my pregnancy with her. And you know, I explained how like I just have felt about that. It's just a very special time in my life. It's always really hard for me going from being pregnant to not being pregnant and like separating physically from the baby. Those thoughts still come across my head a little bit, unfortunately. I feel like that's been like the biggest struggle, plus her being just a little bit tougher of a baby and you know, just having my third baby and realizing like time really does go by really fast. Like having kids has been the biggest blessing in my life. And I feel like this is something I'm gonna think about when I'm like in my 60s, 70s is like the time I'm living right now. And it just makes me sad that it's going to come to an end. I don't know, that's just me. I'm very, I'm an extremely sentimental person, like overboard more probably than the regular population. Like. 
I do weird things like I'll save like a receipt or I'll save like a piece of paper or like clothing or something like if whatever it is like all my gestational diabetes stuff and pregnancy stuff I like I'm not touching that like it's just so I just do weird stuff like that I again I'm just honest like people have like different feelings throughout their postpartum journey that's just me feeling it this way every single baby I've had I've had some sort of weird struggle in my head which is just normal like you know especially with the pregnancy thing and you know your baby growing up like you can't picture you know you have to think of it or I'm thinking of it this way you spent almost an entire year an entire year like pregnancy almost becomes like your identity and like growing your baby or whatever even in motherhood and then it just like stops all of a sudden like and you have to like navigate like a new schedule a new life your new body again like it's just I don't know that's just what I keep reminding myself but every day I feel like is getting better like the shock of newborn having a newborn is like you know settled in already and like I'm getting used to just I'm just getting used to things like I really feel like time heals all so if you're in the thick of it just know like you can go look back at those videos of when I don't make sense even more and then you can look back now like things have been different for me and it will be in a year from now like I'll be even more different than I am speaking right now I remember like being so sick with Adeline like really bad vomiting for like my whole first trimester so hard to swallow pills and I thought that I can just swallow pills again is so weird <laughs> like wow I have to clean all these parts and I'm actually gonna go and feed Adeline yeah me almost on the couch with Adeline right now oh she's sleeping yeah she's been sleeping for a little bit oh good And also, Mila asks to hold Adeline all the time. So it's not something we're like forcing on her. Bye, Mommy. Yes, thank you. <laughs> you mind scooting over? Yes. Can I sit by you? Yes, you can. Here's the baby. Okay. Just in case you need it. So I only did two minutes on the side, my mega boob that she's nursing on right now. And I noticed ever since I decided to um, remove a lot of the foremilk and a lot of the heavy letdown. Um, she's been doing a lot better and she's still having like crazy amounts of wet diapers and everything And that's really what I'm going off of is honestly just you know She's sleeping like two and a half three hour naps as long as it's like on me um, And at night, you know, we get some stretches so far I explained how that was until she's content and getting enough I used to have so much anxiety about like if Sebastian was gonna get enough like I would feed him, pump after, and then give him a bottle, which is not exactly what you want to do. I'm mean, just kind of letting things, you know, it is what it is and it's just has worked out. So, and when in doubt, okay, if she didn't get enough at that time, I'm just gonna put her back on and that's it. Like right now I'm getting a letdown and she's drinking. Um, I've been doing maximum of 15 minutes, 15 to 18 minutes of her on me. Like I keep encouraging it. Um, I at least want to feel at least three to four letdowns and how like soft my boob is afterwards too. Yeah, I think it's just like so crazy to think my oldest daughter can hold my youngest baby right now. Like I remember when this was her like that. So crazy. And that's what I mean like time feels like sad because it's like it's gonna end one day but I'm just you know I can't keep like thinking like that and my hormones obviously you know I'm like still like really freshly postpartum it's not like thoughts that I think of all the time I do want to also say this too I'm sure people are wondering this question Adeline's not our last baby we've always planned on having four kids or wanted a bigger family um but you know, like I don't start having, like I give myself a maximum of at least one year before I start preparing my body for the next pregnancy and next baby. 
like I plan on breastfeeding, pumping, whatever it is for at least a year and weaning by then, like I did with my other two. And then, well, you guys know what, like if some of you followed me back then, you saw that um, after Mila, I had trouble conceiving Sebastian and needed Clomid treatments, fertility treatments. It was like really weird, but eventually, it took a long time to conceive him. Actually, Mila took a long time too. I kept having miscarriages before her, but I had a period, didn't have a period or any of my hormones regulated with Sebastian. So that's why, that's why I was doing all those treatments. And I actually have some footage on that. Like, it's like years ago. And then Adeline, I weaned and I was totally expecting to need to reach out for fertility treatments. I actually had a bottle of Clomid left that I had frozen and I was planning on using, but my period came back after three months after I weaned and I had a couple cycles and it just happened. So I'm really hoping that when it's time again, it'll just happen like that again. Um, yeah, I don't know. Very strange. The human body is really strange. I don't know. I did nothing, literally nothing different. So I just finished feeding her and that's how much extra she actually um spit up all down my bra so now i have to change that it's like all like hot and steamy i just feel it but i also like don't want to move just yet i feel like nursing makes you so lazy once like you finish and it's like you're sitting there i'm either gonna have to put her in the baby carrier depends but i'm gonna try the swing to see if she will sleep, that will be really nice. I just would like to do a couple things around the house, but I mean, I still can with her in the baby carrier, but it just starts to feel like really hot and heavy. And I usually just let her sleep her entire nap in there, which is like two hours. So my back starts to hurt. It's pretty much all I have for updates for now. Um, again, like, talking about the, like the reflux and the spitting up. I don't know if it's because I removed a lot of the fore milk and now she's drinking more of the hind milk, making things easier on her stomach. Or maybe it's just cause now she's a little bit like bigger, like four weeks old. But like when I tell you like one day it just like stopped and, and I'm hoping it doesn't like come back. I mean like the one spit up that she just did down my bra, like I feel like that's like normal. Like she, as soon as she would start feeding, it would be like, excessive like i'm talking like 10 spit ups like and her screaming and crying and now like you can tell she's way more relaxed and everything it's so crazy that's pretty much the four week postpartum update four week newborn update i feel like all of this just happened yesterday it's been a crazy time for sure uh but yeah that's i you know my vlogs are like all over the place with like all these tiny like me just randomly picking up the camera so um, I'm gonna end this vlog here because this kind of makes sense of like today um, But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video